Hi, let's take a look at the Fluke 8842A multimeter. It's a five and a half digit multimeter, and it is probably one of the best uh, secondhand meters you can pick up on eBay. You can pick these up working for like, I've seen them go for as little as hundred bucks, but you can't always get them for that price, but they do go for around about that. And this is a superb uh, meter feature packed and it's 0.003% basic DC accuracy class instrument. It's practically like six and a half digit uh, class accuracy for a five and a half digit meter. Fantastic. It's also got a uh, 20 ohm range as well and a 20 millivolt uh, range as well. Handy for low level uh, stuff. But this one, um, unfortunately, is faulty, and I can't quite remember what the issue is, but it powers up, I believe, but it's got some sort of issue. So hopefully we can see if we can fix these things. But yeah, um, if you're looking for a cheap, accurate uh, bench meter, like used bench multimeter, do yourself a favor. Now this one seems to be missing a few things. <laughs> the GPIB, of course, is gone, and uh, whether or not it originally had it, there's a cable flapping around in the breeze in there, but no external trigger or sample complete, so I'm not sure if that was a uh, option or not, or whether or not they've ripped it out. Anyway, made in the US of A, USA. And a good thing is about buying these internationally is it does have a switchable uh, international voltage on this. Anyway, it's got the uh, four wire sense on the back as well. You can switch between the uh, front and the back terminals, handy. So let's power this up and see what we get, shall we? And one of the things with uh, these, unfortunately, is the vacuum fluorescent display. They can actually dim with uh, times. All right, so let's power this thing up, fingers crossed. Hey, we're in. The display is not too shabby. Um, I do, one thing I like about this display is that it is big. Look at the size of the digits on these. It is, like, it's larger than your usual one. So it really is quite nice. Okay, let's test the functionality, see what's broken. All right, although this Advantest R6142 uh, voltage current generator reference is not good enough to uh, calibrate this thing, it's good enough for doing uh, some basic checks. And it's, uh, let's have a look. 0.5, yeah, that's, well, okay, we need to, could be a, like, that's significantly out, so I'm not sure what that is in percentage, but, uh, yeah, that's not terrific, is it? But, uh, let's go up a range. Okay, not too shabby, so we might have to get a, uh, better meter on there to, uh, uh, I might have to hook up my MV106, uh, reference standard up there and uh, compare it with a seven and a half digit meter to, uh, get an idea of its accuracy, but its basic functionality on DC volts um, seems to be there. Excellent. And the basic current functionality seems to be there as well. It's got uh, slow updating there. Can we uh, make that faster? Get our data, oh, our data rate. There we go. We can change that fast. There you go, you trade off accuracy versus, let's drop down to 10 milliamps. And let's just change that rate again. Yeah, yeah, there we go, yeah. No worries. Beautiful. And the resistance seems to be bang on as well. So, oh, geez, look, it's so fast that it's, it's toggling between the two. You can barely make out those digits. Um, yeah, well, <laughs> they got like bang on on resistance. So DC volts, current and resistance. It's, yeah, I'm going to have to do a full calibration check, but it's basic functionality is there. Um, Hmm. Okay, I just found the uh, original listing and it said it actually measured DC and uh, volts and current fine, which it did, but it was out significantly out on resistance apparently, which we saw it wasn't on one range, so I have to recheck that, but it didn't work on AC. So I boarded over here to my Cal Instruments without fiddling around. Let's recheck the uh, DC volts there. Look at that, 10 volts, absolutely bang on. And uh, if we go down to one, there we go. Look at that, no worries. And 100 millivolts, well, can't get much better. And on the 20 millivolt range, not a problem. And I think I found the problem. Check this out, volts AC, eh, error 30. <laughs> I love a meter that actually, you know, goes to the effort to, you know, they knew that this thing would have, uh, well, they can report errors, and it actually has a, an icon on the screen for error. So error 30, let's go to the manual. And just some basic resistance checks, that's uh, 10 meg, uh, it, I've compared it with my uh, 7.5 digit meter, it's just fine. 
We're good on all the ranges. So, so much for significantly out. We've got test leads and all sorts of other crap on there. 13 ohms. Okay, so now we're really starting to, shouldn't be three ohms out there. One ohm and we're measuring four. Okay, so we might have an issue there. Let me actually plug that over into my seven and a half. And what do we got? Oh, duh. <laughs> Plug the wrong leads. Jeez, I'm an idiot. There we go. Oh, 1.4. So yeah, we obviously have a problem there on the uh, low ohms, but geez, I'm not uh, too fussed about that yet. What we really need to look at is that uh, AC volts, error message. That's what we want to fix. And I do like faults like this. Not only do we get an error message, so we'll be able to go to the service manual for this thing. Even if the serv ma service menu doesn't have the schematics, it should list all the error codes for us. So, you know, having something that we can, you know, a fault that we can narrow down and fix like this, this is really what you want. So if you see an eBay listing for something like this, and it, it even tells you that it gives you an error 30 or something, then, hey, you can go to, you can download the manual before you buy it, check it out, and, you know, at least you got something to work from unlike getting some meter that just you know doesn't power up although that could be good as well because it could just be a power supply issue or something like that but something that just goes completely haywire it could be you know like who knows um it's nice to have something narrowly focused like this let's go and just my luck you read the manual and error 30 is actually not a hardware fault it's not part of the uh power on or automatic uh, self-testing inside this thing it's simply the lack of a true RMS option for this. It's saying you can't measure volts AC. This meter is not has not had that option installed. I didn't even know that was an option. It's like, I haven't used one of these for decades. So yeah, um, so there's nothing wrong with the volts AC. It doesn't either contain a physical module to do that or may, I don't think it's a software option. There's probably some like hardware add-in daughter board. So, Anyway, um, only one thing left to do, tear this thing down. So it turns out that, yep, that's actually option 09. So if you're buying one of these things, there it is there, the AC09. If you can get a photo of the back of the thing, make sure it has that ticked. Otherwise, uh, I assume like they uh, put a marker pen or something there at the factory, make sure that's ticked. Otherwise, you're not going to be actually able to measure. It's not just true RMS. You're not going to have any AC voltage or current measurement at all. So yeah, a uh, bit of a showstopper. Anyway, let's open it. Oh, oh the first thing I noticed is the red silk screen. Check this out. Oh, oh, look at that. Look at the red silk screen markers. Oh, that's sex on a stick. Look at that. Well, I'll tell you what, this is just a beautiful meter inside. We'll have a, a closer look, but look at the uh, ceramic resistor uh, divider networks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight is there. Uh, that's just, that's just crazy. Uh, anyway, yes, and they are all uh, fluke custom because fluke actually of course uh, famously make their own uh, resistor uh hybrids I, have i done a video on that i think i may have hmm anyway one of the uh first things and, and interesting things i noticed look at this they've completely potted that transformer look at that it's like it's in one big potted monolithic block i have never seen anything like that that is absolutely amazing um, anyway, it's very, very neat and tidy. Got ourselves a big ass uh, HRC fuse over there. Very nice to see. Got ourselves the common mode uh, toroid there for the input uh, terminals. One on the front, one on the black and back. Isn't it just beautiful and colourful? Oh, I love it. Anyway, Zilog, Zilog, go crazy, Zilog fanboys. Um, but I don't think, no, it's not a Z, it's a Z8, Zilog Z8 processor. Wow. Anyway, we have our date code on this puppy, uh, 1994 thereabouts. I'm not sure when they stopped uh, making this. Like the manual says like, you know, 2000, um, a copyright 2000. Not sure how long after that they kept up making it, but it had a long life, this puppy, because it was a really quite a nice meter. And the good part about this meter when it comes to uh, servicing, the manual for it, just the regular manual, has the full uh, schematics in there. Absolutely fantastic. Um, if you want to repair it, it should be, you know, eminently repairable. Uh, of course, it's all uh, through-hole, makes it uh, very 
nice, very easy to get in there and uh, measure stuff and uh, replace stuff. Of course, users, you know, like it's going to have some customy fluke type stuff. And it looks like the, there are the odd fluke branded chips down there. They could be just off the shelf ones, but actually rebadged with the uh, fluke part number. So maybe the uh, service manual might shed some uh, light on that. But, you know, it should be fairly repairable in that respect. So, yeah, and it's just a nice layout, easy to access. And you know I'm a big rod fanboy. Look at that. And that's the power rod going through. Um, interesting that they've got that uh, PCB on the bottom there. That's actually quite thin. That's like 0.8 millimeter or something like that. They're just using that as a big uh, shield. So that's quite neat. Copyright 1983, John Fluke Manufacturing Co. There you go. So it probably went for like a Rev F in 88. 1988, is it? I mean, that's how long this sucker. Uh, it sold until at least 2000. Um, so I think, according to the manual, but anyway, um, yes, they've got another rod down here. Now that's actually for the, uh, calibration to, like, you just stick a screwdriver through and you can push that and that engages the, uh, calibration mode over there. The other good thing is, check it out. Looks like we've got a Zycor uh, E squared prom down in there. You'll notice the lack of a battery in this thing. So none of that pain in the ass battery backup uh, calibration values either. So E squared prom all the way with LBJ. No prizes for guessing. That custom fluke chip is the ADC, uh, the dual slope or uh, multi slope integrator. And is that our voltage reference down there? I get my macro lens out. Whoa, for all you LT fanboys. Aha, uh -huh. we don't have an LM399, we have an LTFLU, which is uh, LT Fluke, manufactured by Linear Technology. It was a custom job for Fluke, and it's not the LT, uh, LTZ1000 uh, either. It's a different variant of that, doesn't have a built-in heater, but it's used in some of the, uh, it's used in the Fluke... Um, uh, 732 voltage reference standard. That's why this meter is so darn good. It's, you know, 0.003% class meter because the reference in it, the LTFLU, is brilliant. So that is massive overkill for a five and a half digit meter. It'd be overkill for a six and a half digit multimeter, which would use the classic, uh, you know, LM399, uh, for example, which is not as good as this. This is like almost a transfer standard uh, class reference, and they've got it in this five and a half digit meter. So if you buy one of these, uh, you know, you can buy one of these. I paid 60 bucks for this, uh, uh, you know, broken in quote marks, um, you know, sold as not uh, working. And some people would say it's worth it just for the reference alone, all the volt nuts out there anyway, I'm sure. Check out down on the PCB, copyright 1983. So this one was manufactured in uh, 94. And as I said, so it probably had, you know, getting on to a 20 year lifespan, I would suspect. Awesome. Now, if you're wondering where does the uh, ACO9 True RMS option go, well, it actually goes into this big ass header here, and I'll include a photo of that. It's actually a separate uh, board, separate whole separate module that actually plugs into that. So obviously the software uh, detects. It's got a pin on there that detects whether or not it's installed, and it's not. Error 30 when you press AC. Of course, they didn't even bother to take the button out of the front panel because that would be a user installable option. Just, you know, opening this thing up, plugging the board in. Yeah, you'd void your calibration if there's a cow sticker on it, etc. But still, you know, it's not something that has to be done at, at the factory, that's for sure. Now, if you are working on these, it should be uh, pretty safe. You know, all the transformers potted, everything else, all the mains wirings are nice and neat and tidy. But the range switch on the back, the, ex uh, the rear side of the board there, is exposed so just be careful that you don't you know accidentally just go oh yeah I'll just move it and grab the thing like that just be careful but apart from that should be pretty safe to work on I love how that poor power resistor there has been uh, almost bodged in although it does show the silk screen does imply that it sort of supposed to be mounted vertically but <laughs> neat and more bad news it works Oh, the EV blog repair curse is just hopeless. I buy a, you know, a, a faulty bit of gear and there was nothing wrong with that ohms range. What it was, it, it was most likely just the uh, input um, uh, input selection, uh, well, the front rear selection switch here probably just had a dicky contact. It just needed to be cycled a couple of times and 
Bingo. Like 1.4, 1, 1. that's the leads in the box and everything else. That's what my other seven and a half digit meter measures with this uh, box on that range. So that is, it, it's fine. Everything's practically bang on with this meter. Like it's, ah, uh, yeah, I need to probably a bit more exhaustive calibration checking, which is, you know, it can be really uh, uh, tedious, but uh, it, spot check on each range so far is well within spec. So, yeah, I like unbelievable, unbelievable. Anyway, very useful uh, 20 ohm range that for, uh, you know, one milli ohm resolution. Very nice for tracking down shorts and stuff like that. Very handy, as is the 20 millivolt mode as well. That's that's uh, pretty jazzy. One microvolt resolution. And given that this is a 0.003% class uh, basic instrument, uh, like if you can pick one of these up for, uh, you know, a hundred bucks, Definitely do yourself a favor and get one. Awesome. So it's that switch down there. That's the uh, culprit there. And they're going to be like a self, effectively self wiping, self cleaning contacts in there. So unless it proves to be an intermittent issue, uh, it will require more use and more playing around with to determine that. But it seems rock solid now. So I think it just had a bit of crud in there and just needed to be cycled once. And bingo. So I wouldn't be going spraying contact cleaner in there willy nilly. You know, there's people who say, oh yeah, the first thing I do is contact cleaner right throughout the switch. And yeah, you could just uh, do it on the, squirt it on the top and it'd get down the individual uh, pins down in there. So if you've got your favorite uh, contact uh, cleaner, then by all means go for it. But I, I don't think I'd bother on this one because it hasn't caused me an issue apart from that one time. You know, it's probably been sitting in storage for 15 years. And by the way, if you're worried about, you know, the annoying part about having to uh, take off the cover to replace the uh, fuse down there, don't really worry about it because it's actually just a backup fuse. The primary one is on the front, non-HRC, of course, but that puppy's going to, uh, you know, just in general use is going to uh, blow first. You typically wouldn't be using these on high power and main stuff. They're like more for bench uh, measurement use and stuff like that. So that's all fine and dandy. You shouldn't have to open the case, especially if you've got one with a uh, recent uh, cow sticker. Um, then, yeah, you can just replace the fuse on the front. No worries. And here's an old friend I haven't dragged down in a while, the Fluke 5458 resistance calibrator. I've been meaning to do a calibration of this, um, a calibration of the calibrator using my uh, uh, Wecom uh, resistance uh, standard, which I've got, which is actually better than this. And you can use the one single 10K transfer standard to actually calibrate all the ranges on this. There's a sneaky procedure that allows you to uh, do that. I've been meaning to do a video on that for a long time, so I might get around to it one day. Anyway, this allows us, this is a uh, reference um, resistor standard. I've done a teardown of this. I'll link it in down at the end. It's beautiful inside. Oh, check out that video. Trust me, it's fantastic. It's almost pornographic. Um, and this allows me to uh, generate a, um, a low value resistances. I'm on the 10K uh, standard at the moment, um, but I haven't verified the calibration of this right down. So it claims to be 10.00012. Anyway, more than good enough for this. There we go. We're in a last couple of last least significant digits there. Of course, if we switch over to the uh, two wire mode, you see 10.3 because it includes all the lead resistance and bleh, all contacts and every, you know, the contacts inside the switch in, in there and everything else. Um, but on four wire mode, of course, there you go. It's basically bang on and we can actually use the one K, the one ohm standard down here. Oh, you got to see, yeah, that's 9996. So it's once again, a couple of least significant digits out. That's got to be well within our spec. So no worries whatsoever. And yeah, we could do this until the cows come home. I know everyone wants to see every range, don't they? Yes, all right. All right, I haven't tried this. Oh, look at that. Almost bang on. Oh, oh. And, you know, it's, <laughs> all these are going to be well within spec well within spec. So this meter is a winner winner. Whoop, yep, that's good enough. Winner winner chicken dinner. Oh, look at that. And 100 meg. I don't think it does 100 meg. No, I think it only goes up to 20. I can't remember how many counts this is. Uh, uh, 20, uh, 200,000 count, something like that. Anyway, there you go. Bang on.
So once again, sorry, I was hoping to bring you a repair video. I buy these repair things occasionally. Um, and, uh, you know, tr hoping, crossing my fingers, that there'll be an interesting repair, not just a simple blow and fuse, or not beyond economical repair, as quite a few of my repairs have turned out to be. So, yeah, I'm not even going to title this a repair video, because it's not. It's just a look at the Fluke. 8842A multimeter with a pretty, like almost a transfer class reference standard in there, that FLU1 uh, uh, reference standard. If you can pick, like for 50, like for 100 bucks, you can get these that are working. You wouldn't get one that's, you know, uh, recently calibrated for that. If you can, um, then an absolute bargain. But yeah, by all means, uh, put a search term on eBay. I know that if I mention something's good and available on eBay, they you know, double in price instantly. So sorry, you know, <laughs> but these things have gone for as little as like a hundred bucks, but yeah, uh, it's like fantastic meter. If you can still pick it up with a decent display, cause these uh, vacuum fluorescents do fade over time. I think someone might've even done like a replacement display project for it or something like that. But yeah, really nice old school meter, the 8842A. If you can pick one up, do yourself a favor. Anyway, if you like that video, please give it a big thumbs up. As always, discussed down below. Catch you next time.